magazines filled to their belly. Why are you looking for them? Of course I am. Have you seen them? No. I'll tell them if I see them. It's a quiet job for a young man. Most of our gardeners are quite middle-aged. Well, Mother, it's the, it's the sort of job that, uh, that suits me. And besides, it, uh, it has its compensations. In more than seven years now, the Colonel thinks he ought to try to get the medical board to reinstate him again. Well... What else, Mr. Zachary? You're a liar. Prosecution ready? The prosecution is ready. Is the defense ready? I suppose as ready as we're going to be. Then let the trial begin. married her for her money? Of course I did. Why else would a reasonably handsome young man marry a 50-year-old woman? Guilty. And I walked out the day after I got her to sign the deed to all this property over to me. I am guilty. But what am I guilty of? Living my life for me? Or having the opportunity to? You never tried to sell the property before. But you loved us too. What do you think, honey? Hey, I know it's a bit small, but can't you just see us up here like the Lord and Lady looking out over the peasants, huh? Oh, I'm not sure. It feels so isolated. I don't like being up so high. Hey, no, that's the only way you get a good view. Now, come on, let's go take a closer look, huh? Hey, 
feel how fresh that wind is, huh? It'll be cold when winter really comes. Ah, I'll keep you warm. Hey, Janie, I'm sorry about this morning. A thousand times sorry. It won't happen again. What more can I say, huh? Why did it have to happen at all? Well, he pushed you around, honey. Nobody does that when I'm with you. I want to look after you, Janie. Always. You know, if people really knew you, you wouldn't need me at all. What do you mean? You know, the boss. Cool and aloof. That's how people see you. But you were just as soft as anybody else. Just as lovable. Don't make any mistake, Harry. If I think our marriage can't work, I will have enough strength to break the relationship. Yeah. Well, I've always wanted it to work, Jane. You see, to me, you are a beautiful woman. And I just want you to feel happy to be with me. I'm all right now. You know, when I think about it, those things that they, uh, they used to call you at school... Exclusive schools can be exclusively privately cruel. Well, that's why I've always tried to give you real confidence, real belief in yourself. You sure you just don't like hearing yourself say nice things? Hey, let's do something crazy. We've already done something crazy. We got married. Oh, let's go and buy the house up at Lilydale, hmm? Do you really think that'd help? Mm-hmm. It's our special place. We have to go there, Jane. Well, right now I have to go to work, and so do you. Well, Sir Charles, this is a surprise. It's very late. This is Mr. Michael Ryan. Michael? They said they had something to tell me, but I refused to talk until you were here. Well, now, that sounds very interesting. Can I offer either of you gentlemen a drink? Mr. Ryan is a private inquiry agent. Oh, is that so? I employed him, and I hope you'll forgive me. But I always believed that this man was a liar at the best and a criminal at the worst. Why do you think that's it, Charles? Ryan has been investigating you. Investigating me? His name is not Harry Moore. It's Harry Wood. Three years ago, he married a girl named Marjorie Davis. Less than one year after they were married, she died under strange circumstances, apparently by accident. Go on. Yes. Do go on, Sir Charles. After her death, he inherited a small fortune, which he has obviously disposed of. And, and having disposed of, he needed a meal ticket, so he came to me. Is that what you're saying? Jane, the circumstances of this man's first wife's death. Do you think he's going to drown me for my money? Is that how desirable you think I am? All right. Earlier today, Harry noticed somebody following us. Of course, we know now who it was. It was one of your private detectives. Bought and paid for by my father. Jane. If you don't mind, I'd like to talk now. Oh, I'm not blaming you. You were paid to do it. It's your job. But you have told me nothing that I don't already know. He changed his name to escape from the sort of scandal-mongering and rumours that you have brought here with you today. He changed his name to that of a man whom he admired. Oh, you might think it's childish, silly. But it's not a crime. When did he tell you this? If this has got anything to do with you at all, Mr. Ryan... It has. I don't think we've had the full story about his first wife's death. I believe... I don't know anything about you, Mr. Ryan. But no doubt in the world in which you move, you believe all sorts of things. Personally, for the time being, I'd like to believe in the man who married me. Have you anything more to say, Sir Charles? I've got something more to say. Harry and I are trying very hard to make our marriage work. If we have made a mistake, then let us be the ones to decide that. I won't stand for, won't allow anyone to interfere with our lives. Now, please, please, go away. I know how you feel, honey, but when you take time to think about the stories that I told you, see, they start to seem worse. Harry, I'm frightened. Frightened? Frightened of what? About us. About it ending. What do you feel that it's going to end? Yes. Yes, I think it is. Hey. 
Makes me frightened too, honey. Okay? No. What's wrong, honey? I don't know. Hey, don't you want to look at the house? Well, if you don't, that's fine. We can just go right on back down. Hey, you know, you don't have to look at it. Now we're here, we'll look. Hey, you know, Jane, I, I guess we're about as high up as that big new building of yours. Come and have a look at the view. Have a look at the house. No, we have to. We... We have to look at the view. Oh, Harry, Harry, be careful. You're hurting my arm. No, we have to look at the view. What is it? Darling, what's, what's wrong? It's Misty. She wants me to make you die. No! No! For seven generations, the Frasers have been seafarers, Mrs. Shortland. The only one to uh, break the tradition has been my brother. <laughs> I'm ashamed to confess it, Mrs. Shorten, but I've chosen to settle here in the colony. But why be ashamed of that? I think Sydney's a wonderful town, don't you think so, Captain? Uh, I should be very sorry to leave it. The colony has a vigor which I find bracing, but uh, Eliza is missing the mists of her native Scotland and our young son, who is um, staying with my mother. And is this your last voyage? It is, it is. I've sailed many ships over many seas, but the rigors of command are proving too much. Age and ill health are catching up with me. Ill health? Nothing too serious, I hope, Captain. Mm, serious enough. Gout, tropical fever, cramps of the stomach, arms and legs. And on occasions, my bunions crippling. But Eliza's been a godsend. These long voyages would have been unbearable if it hadn't been for her. I've rubbed shoulders with all sorts ever since I was 14, and I've never come across anything more decent in my life. Decency is, well, well, it depends on the people, and don't you say that it doesn't. Well, I mean decent, like, like marriage. Well, that's different. You said yourself it was. Oh, yeah, that's different, all right. Compared to all the marriages I know, what I've got is... is five months of heaven every year. And it's the same for them. Seven months of the year they spend up there killing themselves in the cane season. And they come down here to... to live a little. Well, that's what the layoff is. Not just a time for playing around and spending a lot of money, but a time for living. Do you think I haven't sized that up against what other women have? I laugh at them every time they try and tell me. Even waiting for Rue to come back is more exciting than anything they've got. So you can make up your mind right now. You're either going to be polite to them and hang on until you get to know Barney well enough to decide, or you're going to get out of here right now. Nancy said it was how they walked into a pub as if they owned it. Even just in the way they walk, you could spot it. All around would be the regulars. Soft city blokes having their drinks and little arguments. And then in would come Rue and Barney. They wouldn't say anything. They didn't have to. There'd just be a sort of a wait for a second or two and then quiet. After that, without a word, the regulars would stand aside and let them through just as if they was a... a couple of kings. She always said they made the rest of the mob look like a bunch of skinned rabbits. <laughs> Poor old Nancy. She got what she wanted, didn't she? I'd like to ask her. Right now, with the two of them expected any minute and her seeing chained to that... that book bloke, I'd like to ask her whether she thinks it was worth it, and I bet that's one question she wouldn't be able to laugh her way out of. Well, you... You're not going back. Now, look, I... I know this is 17 years too late. And what I'm offering is not much chop. I want to marry you, all. No. Oh. You can't get out of it like that. I won't let you. Oh, 
Charlotte, what the hell's wrong? You've got to go back. It's the only hope we've got. Stop that screaming, will you? You think I'll let it all end up in... in marriage every day of bait factory? You think I'll marry you? Well, what else can we do? You gone mad or something? First you tell me I made you low, and now, look, you don't know what you want. Oh, I do. I want what I had before. You give me back what you've taken. Give it back to me! Olive, <laughs> it's gone! Can't you understand? Every last little oh. scrap of it gone! Oh, I won't. I'll kill you first. All right, kill me then. But there's no more flying down out of the sun. No more eagles. This is the dust we're in, and we're going to walk through it like everybody else for the rest of our lives. Oh. Give it back to me, she says. As if I take it away from her. Oh, me. Oh, Lee. What's the matter? Oh, come on, tell me. A serious talk with you, lovey. Now, well, you see, we want you to know that we like you and that you've been a good girl. It'd be different if you had some property. You see, our Peter, he's almost as sure as made it with Susie Duffy. What are you talking about? Oh, we've seen you going out at night. We can't say we blame you. He's a good-looking lad. But you don't have any property, you see, like you, I said. You don't think that... You can't. Oh, no. There, there, lovey. I told you'd be too much of a shock for her. Come on. No one ever really died of a broken heart. You see, girl, things being as they are, we got to send you home. I've wrote a bit of a letter for you. Just to tell your ma? And they don't have to worry about the money. Not until things look up. Oh, come on. Don't take it so hard. There's plenty of other nice fellas in the world. Oh. You need some bloody sense belted into it. We're too soft on that boy, Sean. Let them stay out till all hours. Racing around all over the place in his mate's bloody souped-up car. Good place for the work I did. Don't appear. He's way out of place. He's been smoking narcotics for years, for all we know. Tea's on the table. Tea's on the table. Where is he? He'd drive off and leave us if he could, but he can't get anywhere without pitch. Can you even take that sorry expression off your stupid face? You're not fooling anyone around here, you little runt. Hey, fillets or fingers? Fingers. Bloody cat's food. Well, if you don't like them, there's a cold chop in the fridge. I suppose you're still hallucinating, are you? Eh? Still up on cloud nine. Wasn't grass. I don't lie to me. You can take that pansy junk out of your ear roll as well. Well, how do you think your mother and me feel? Bloody drug addict in the house. Next thing we know, the bloody drug squad will be knocking down the front door. Well, they won't be wanting you back at school. So what are you going to do then, eh? 
don't want to go back, do I? Oh, no, you don't want to go back. No, you want to leave, find yourself a nice little job. Brain surgeon. Well, I got news for you, son. There are no jobs for rubbish like you. Have you got any training, have you? Hey? Aren't you worried about scrappy. That's where you're going. Ivan left school last week and he got a job. 100 bucks a week in the hand. 100 bucks a week? <laughs> Bullshit. Works in his old man's dry cleaning shop. Well, I don't happen to own a bloody shop, do I? I just have to go in the dole in, won't I? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, it's you all over, isn't it? Hey, you never had to do a decent day's work in your life. You're not about to start, are you? You think the bloody world owes you a living. Well, that's all right. If that's your attitude, go on, get out there. Join all your mates on the bloody dole. Well, that one thing's for sure. You won't be staying around here while you're living on bloody handouts, that's for certain. You look at me while I'm speaking to you. Come on, get stuck. I'm not going to look at you, ugly bastard. Listen, you're crap. Now you get back here and finish your dinner before I give you a bloody good hiding. Do you hear me? Jamie, you come back here. I want an apology. Leave him alone, Neil Lee. Neil Lee, don't stop. Don't Neil. I won't be getting any sleep tonight. She didn't drink all that tea. Well, where do you think he's gone to? We've never Afraid clue. Got away? Yes. Anyway, there's nothing you can do about it. Without the petrol. You had the boxes in the tank. Doing good. Now, I'm sure he won't be going to any of our relatives, Sergeant. He'll be going to where the young people hang around. What, the beaches or something? Oh, well, something like that. Oh, yes, and he's got this friend who used to live near us in Fairfield. Wild boy. Stole cars and things. You know, just to show off to his friends. Well, you probably know the sort, Sergeant. Well, he left home last year and went mixed flatting in town. And, well, I think Jamie's been meeting up with him and going out on the town Friday and Saturday nights. And what's this chap's name? Alexander Skinner. His friends call him Sadie. Honestly, some of the nicknames. Alexander Skinner. And uh, where does this chap live? Oh, well, I don't know, Sergeant. I, I think he's one of those sorts of people who just drift from place to place in the eastern suburbs. I see. Right, well, uh, I'll have this file circulated immediately. I took some time off yesterday and observed one of your operations. You're very good. I didn't know you were interested in surgery. I thought you preferred paperwork. Well, I don't mind watching, but I wouldn't like to do it. Are you glad you came back? Uh, I've had a few minor problems, but... Yes, I think so. I suppose having a family to come back to us helped. Uh, in some ways. Well, what about you? Uh, you're Australian. Where's your family? I'm from Melbourne. Well, from what you told me, it sounded like you were doing very well in the States. Why'd you come back? I felt a little homesick for Australia, and koalas and kangaroos, <laughs> and the smell of burnt chops, and things like that. Do you think you'll stay long? I don't know. I'll see what happens. What about you? I'm going to play it by year two. Always assuming, of course, Brian Denham invites us to stay on. Hmm. These are the files he wanted. Thank you. You haven't brought the Collier file. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have left it downstairs. I'm sick to death of inefficiency. Reports not ready. Correct files not I delivered. I said I'm sorry. I'll, I'll arrange for the courier to bring it up. Dr. Steele and I can't be expected to wait whilst the courier... All right, I'll bring it up myself. As soon as possible, please. Erica, what are you doing up here? Oh, I delivered some files to Dr. Napier, but unfortunately I forgot one, so I'm going down to get it. Oh, you shouldn't have to do that. We do have couriers. It's needed urgently. Dr. Napier can't wait. Yes, but you shouldn't be running around. I, I don't mind, really. That's not the point. Oh, please, Raymond. Don't worry, Erica. Please knock. Oh, Dr. Shore, I'm sorry. You've come for your appointment with Dr. Steele. I think you owe my wife an apology as well. She's a part-time file clerk, not a messenger. Oh, she volunteered to get a file for me. Only because you insisted. Well, we needed it urgently. I'll make sure that she doesn't get in trouble with a supervisor over it. There's uh, something I think you should know about my wife. She has multiple sclerosis. Oh, I didn't know. In the future, I'd be grateful if you'd give her a little more consideration. So if you can give me your requirements, I'll put them in my forecast for next month. You'll need a lot of extra work. 
I want to look at alternate ways of containing costs, resource allocation, things like that. Okay, but I won't be able to finish it till later tonight. Oh, that's all right. I'll be here to weigh up to seven. You can bring it up to me when you're finished. Oh, and by the way, there's a tape of the last board meeting that Dr. Steele wants us to listen to. Uh, it's very, very relevant in your area. Sure. Well, I'll see you later then. Oh, and if you have any problems, just give me a ring. Thanks. Have you had any more problems with people talking about Dr. Hall? No, I just don't understand why it all happened. I tried to make a few more inquiries, but uh, I didn't come up with anything. Well, I only hope that it doesn't start up all over again. By the way, I've been receiving some very strange letters. Oh, it's no time for your round of the children's wards. I oh. have the patient files here. I'm sure you'll be interested to know, Dr. Napier, that my sister is now back at work. Oh, what happened? Is she all right? Well, she was absent through no fault of her own, but you'll be getting a report about it, if that's what you're worried about. I'll see you later, Dr. Holland. Oh, you two don't exactly get on, do you? No, but you seem to. I finished. I feel more like an accountant than a doctor. It's only once a month. You started to tell me something early this afternoon. Oh, did I? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it can't have been very important. Look, the tape's ready, so if you'd care to have a seat, it may take a while. Well, I hope it's not too long. That concludes the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, any business arising from the correspondence? Now, one of the factors involved in costs escalation is absenteeism. Dr. Napier in the personnel department <laughs> will be conducting a research study to examine this problem in all departments as a whole. Oh, Tom. Hello, Judith. How are you? I really miss you. What's going on? Whose voice was that? My husband's. Well, it can't because he's... I know. My husband's dead. Dr. Denham's office. Dr. Napier speaking. Judith, it's Graham Steele speaking. Mrs. Gallagher in Ward 5 would like to see you. What now? Later will do. I think it's just a matter of her medication being adjusted. Ward's just does her rounds in about an hour. Could you do it before then? Well, I don't think I could manage that. Dr. Denham's in his office, but he's not taking any calls. Um, could we leave it till later? Never mind. I'll manage to do it. Uh, I would like to see you later on this afternoon, though. Will you ring me when it's convenient? Yes, of course. I think you should read this. I am Dr. Hall. I see. Well, no wonder you were shy of patient contact. But, well, this is all in the past. Yes, I know. And I thought that if I could work full-time in administration, it would be safe for me to come back home. But ever since I arrived, someone has been hounding me. Who? Well, I don't know. I've been receiving letters and tapes and all sorts of things purporting to be from my late husband. Do you have any idea who it could be? The only person who knows about me here is Dr. Holland. However, something happened the other day that I don't quite understand. Up until now, all contact has been made anonymously. But this time, the cutting was actually handed to me in person. By whom? Sister Gibbs. Well, where did she get it? I don't know. Well, I'll find out. I wish you'd told me about this earlier. I know I should have, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I know it isn't spelled out in the article, but... I was convicted for the murder of my husband. I went to prison for it. Shh. What are you doing Keep here? Your voice down. No, I'm not the one who's after you. I came to wait too. Sharon! No. But hang on a second. You've got some explaining to do. Look, I can't believe it. She's an old friend of mine. 
It couldn't have been you who sent me those horrible messages. Oh, it was me, all right. But why? Because... Because you... You killed the man I loved. <gasps> you were the other woman. The other? I was the one he cared about. And if he... If he'd stayed with me, he'd, he'd be alive now. But you were a friend of mine. I... I had no idea. When I heard... You were back in Australia. I took this job at the hospital as a cleaner. I was determined to ruin your life the way you did mine. I still am! Check the bag, Judith. Oh. You wouldn't have used this. It's what you deserve. I think it's time we told the police what's going on here, Judith. Can you call them? I'll make sure she doesn't go anywhere. Oh, hi. How are you feeling this morning? Relieved. But I still can't believe the whole thing. Dr. Steele, could I have a word with you when you put me in? I was just going. Dr. Holland's just been filling me in about what happened last night. I hope this means you'll be able to settle down a little more. I'm afraid not. I'm not taking up my option to stay. Oh, that's a shame. You're excellent at your job. I spoke to Dr. Denham this morning. The board of directors have made it clear that I can stay on, but uh, I really don't think I should. Well, that's your decision. I'd better go. I've really got a lot of things to tie up. Mind if I join you? No, not at all. It's probably the last cup of tea we'll have together here. I finish up at the Albert today. Oh, that's a coincidence. So do I. Oh. We arrive on the same day and we're leaving the same day. Do you mind if I ask you why you've decided not to stay on? I thought I'd travel around a bit, sort myself out. My story's pretty similar. What are you going to do? At this point, I'm undecided. Although, I feel that I haven't been as happy here as I should have been. So I think it's wise to get out now. Yes, we live and learn, don't we? <laughs> anyway, if I don't see you, best of luck for the future. Thanks. And I wish you all the best, too. Well, I'd better go and clear up some of that paperwork of mine. What's wrong with him? I think he's upset about his son's resignation. Oh, I didn't know he was leaving, too. Though I can understand why he should want to. I'm afraid Dr. Denham's busy at the moment. That's all right. I came to see you. You finished with those requisitions? Yes, I'll have the others later. That's all right. That's all I needed. Judith, I can't help being curious. What really happened with your husband? Frank had a long history of cardiac arrhythmia and high blood pressure. And I'd been giving him a daily injection of lenoxin for some years. That is, up until the night he didn't come home. I'd suspected for some time that he'd been having an affair with another woman. And when he came home in the morning, I challenged him. We had a big row. And Frank started getting palpitations and feeling faint. Time for his lenoxin injection. Mm. I realised I hadn't given him his daily shot. I prepared it, gave it to him. And a few hours later, he died. An overdose? Well, at my first trial... The jury assumed that it had been an overdose, but then later on some new evidence came to light. Frank had been out that night, eaten a lot of shellfish and overreacted. Early in the morning a doctor was called in and he was given a, an injection of adrenaline. Oh, adrenaline then lenoxin. A fatal combination, but you didn't know anything about the other injection? That's what the jury decided. Now, if you don't mind, I'm terribly busy. Okay. I'm just dropping off this summary, Doctor. Thank you. I'm leaving today. I'd just like to thank you for all your help and say goodbye. Well, it's been nice working with you. Good luck. And I hope your wrist continues to improve. Listen, if you need any help with your luggage... Oh, well, I was going well, to... Just give us a buzz, right? I'll provide the transport. Thank you. I was just going to pop into casualty to say goodbye. Oh. We can't persuade you to change your mind. Oh, I wish you all the best, then. And I'd be happy to provide you with a recommendation if ever you want one. Thanks. And thanks again for all your help. Oh, my pleasure. Can you manage the case, all right? Uh, I've offered a lift to the station. In fact, we'd better get a move on, I think. Mm -hmm. ah. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. And good luck. And I hope you're better soon. Thank you. I've had some run-ins with her in the past, but I guess she's really quite a nice person. Yes, she is. 
It's going to be a great loss to the Albert. Oh, about time. Where have you been? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're sure. He's here, love. I'll get him for you. It's for you, Barney. Press Club. Yeah, this is Barney. Where are you? About 15 minutes out of Sydney. Let me speak to Jack. Oh, I'm sorry, love. He's not here. Some men came in, and he and Sam O'Bannon went off with them. The rest of them? Haven't the faintest. It all seemed a bit sinister, though. I think they took some tapes with them, too. What's going on? I'll tell you later. Don't worry, mate. We've got a manly tomorrow and have oysters. Oh, really? Mind you, about that. Yeah. You've made up your mind yet? Yeah, just gives a couple of pies, thanks. Oh, I can't do your pies, love. My microwave's off. Well, I'll just have a, an orange juice, thanks. With a straw. Well, where are you heading for? Sydney. Oh. How are you going to get there? I think I'll have to walk. Oh, hey, you <coughs> ask me mates. They're going all the way into town. I could fix it for you. Oh, thanks, that'd be good. Hey, Niall, you got room for a couple more? Keep away from the window. Stay in the middle of the room and they can't hurt you. Hello. Mary Ford. Hello, Steve. If you prefer it, I could come back later. Please don't touch that. It's fragile. Stephen West, Kate Dean. Hi. Saw your act on television. Very impressive. Thanks. I see you've been reading the latest edition. I don't have to, do I? They're uh, all the same. Well, the issues are the same. The only thing that changes are the battle lines. That sounds like a good reason to give up. Is that what you did? What can I do for you, Mary? We're asking the Construction Workers Union to boycott work on your project. You're threatening the wrong person. We just designed the buildings here. We're meeting tonight, if you'd like to give your side. You don't want to listen to me. You want a moving target. Look, if you don't mind, I'm flat to the boards. You know you'll never build it, don't you, Steve? Why not? Because we won't let you, mate. Well, I don't think your bloody building design's that fantastic scene. Yeah. I've been living in the same place all my life. What in the hell am I going to do the now? The first thing we ought to do is to piss off the bloody ring in here. Sit down. And let the genuine residents decide what they're going to do. Same as we've always done. I'll bloody sort you out soon, Jim Taylor. I just want to save my house, that's all. I'm not interested in what the squatters and the unions want. And I'm not a communist. I asked the union to come. Uh, look, mate, if you want the unions yeah, behind you, mate. we're right there. But if you don't, well, Sit down. Got a lovely wife and kids waiting for me at home. Don't you go and make your wife and kids. Don't you think you're alive. safe just because you weren't pushed out today. The first stage took all this. Yeah, right but Houseman wants right, right down to Dexter Avenue, right all of it. The inner city's changing. Oh, Everyone wants to move closer to the centre, and I'll pay to do it. I'm sorry, it's just a natural process. Look, if we can just stall a little bit longer, Hausman will give up, and the government will take over. If they'd wanted to buy the property, they would have done it before the church sold the Hausman. Now drive him to the wall, and another developer will just take his place. We're going to vote, but let's vote and get it over with. We're screwed anyway. I vote that we ask McDavies and the union to ban work on the project. Yeah. And I reckon we take a vote right now. All those in favour, come on. Aye. Aye. Well, what's wrong with you? Look, Annie's one of your neighbours. She got thrown out of the house today. We've got to stick together. Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. House already won the right to buy and sell us like real estate. If we allow these men to push us out of our houses, we accept the mastery of the rich. Yeah. We're not just fighting for our community, we're fighting for working people everywhere. Yeah. What do you want? All those that's in your backyard tomorrow. Oh, All those right? in favour. Oh. I declare the motion carried.
It always amazes me how quickly logic gets drowned out by soapbox emotions. The logic is we want to keep our homes. I'm sorry, Steve. Perhaps now you'll realise that. Come in, Kate. Anyway, I still think he's rude. Spot is OK. Had a nice time? Oh, yeah, we had a great time, like Jack. I told one of the locals what bait to use. That's nice. Big head. Pardon, dear? Uh, Ben. Oh, have you, dear? I've never noticed. Anyway, we saw... I found a fabulous old place across the river. You went across the river? No, we just saw it from the day. Castle House. Oh, Castle House, of course. You know I don't believe anybody's lived there for years. Oh, I'd love to go and have a look at it. Well, I don't know whether that's a good idea. Don't tell me you've had your hair cut. Permed. There's been a bloke ringing STD all day. He left this message for you. Oh, yes, it's from a friend of mine, my publisher. Samari's been eating him out of house and home. Publishers looking after you, Dolph. Well, they're a desperate breed of men. Five more bills came for you, and two final notices. I put them under your door. Thank you. Why don't we have an affair? Well, I'm still a free man. Not while your room's in that condition. Oh, well, that's the sticking point. Hi, can I help you? Oh, no, thanks. I'm just looking. They're just a new line. They're nice, aren't they? Not bad. Are you looking for something for a special occasion or just ordinary day wear? No, I'm just an ordinary style. Any particular colour? No. Mm. Well, how about this one? How much? It's uh, $56. It's just a synthetic, but you can hardly tell these days, can you? Well, do you reckon it'll fit me? Yes, it's on an elasticised base. If you'd just like to come through, we can try it on. No, I... it doesn't matter. As long as it fits, it'll be all right. Well, it'll only take a minute. No, it'll be OK. Fifty-six dollars, you see it? Yes. Well, just shove it in a bag, will you? Right. Uh, won't be a minute. My name's Jean Carter. Oh, of course. The Salvation Army rang me about you. I'm Judy Bright. I run the place. How are you? Yeah, I know. They told me. You're going to be staying with us for a while, huh? Oh, well, if it's possible, you... I've nowhere else to go. You, you see, my husband walked out on me and hey, I... Hey, hey, come on now, love. It's all right. You're going to have fun here. It's not the Ritz, but we're really comfortable. I'm sorry. Look, everyone that comes here has problems. That's why they're here. We're not going to pry or try and find out any of your business, but if you need us, we'll be there. Huh? Thanks. Now, look, we're having lunch. Why don't you come and join us? Good chance to meet the girls, huh? Right. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, that bitch. Thieving little bitch! What the hell's going on? It's Hazel. She's nicked me cash. I thought you said you didn't have any money. Well, I did. What I put away for a rainy day and it's gone. The whole damn lot. Well, maybe if you'd been honest with me... None Don't of you start lecturing me. That lousy bitch has stolen it. Are you sure you haven't misplaced it? What? You saw her with the suitcase. She wasn't going to a pawn shop. She was clearing out. When I find her, she'll wish she hadn't been born. You gonna call the cops? No cops. I don't want any cops. How much money was it? Oh, forget it. I'll take care of this myself, all right? I just want to get a fag, that's all. Okay, Carter, step up. Well, anything wrong? No. Your name is Jean Mary Carter of no fixed address, is that correct? Yes. Yes, Miss Ferguson. Yes, Miss Ferguson. You've been charged with stealing property not exceeding the value of $250 and assaulting a police officer and have been sentenced to one month's imprisonment, is that correct? Yes, Miss Ferguson. Fine. We'll take it from here. Well, keep yourself nice, Jean. OK, Carla, let's have your possessions.
And I'll have that too. What? Never been inside before, eh? There's Jean Carter, ladies. I'm sure you'll make her welcome. And, uh, by the way, Carter is not subject to the penalties imposed on H Block before she arrived. How long are you in for? A month. I see. Could be useful. Useful? How? Well, you haven't lost your privileges, see? But we have. Well, I don't understand. What privileges? Well, buy up for one. We might just be persuaded to accept a contribution or two from you, just to show your goodwill. But escapes need careful planning and friends on the outside. How would you know? Oh, just repeating what I've heard from mates. A few of them are ex-crims. Name one. No way. Anyway, they're all interstate. Margo says you've got mates on the inside. That's right, interstate. Where? Sydney. Well, some of the girls here have done time in Sydney. They might know your mates. Maybe. Well, if you ever want to get a message through, I don't. The only message I want to get through is that I want to be left alone. I'm only in here for a few weeks and then out. I don't want to get involved. Well, they caught me passing stolen money. Oh, I didn't know it was nicked. Yeah? I'm getting out of here in three weeks' time, so long as you keep your mouth shut. But if those cops so much as look sideways at me, your precious kids are going to be orphans. Understand? I've got a bone to pick with you. Such as? Such as Hazel doing time for a crime you committed. Says who? Says me. You're barking up the wrong tree. If she didn't do it, she's got nothing to worry about. But don't try pinning it on me. Cops have verbaled her and she could do a long stretch. Tough. Them's the brakes. Don't be so cocky, Carter. The cops are after you, not Hazel. Like I told you before, I don't know what you're talking about. If you've got any proof, you'd better produce it. But get off my back. I haven't. Not yet. But I'll get it. And then what? You'll be the first to know when it happens. Hazel Kent's in here for something she didn't do. <laughs> That's familiar claim. She's innocent. That robbery money the police found her with wasn't hers. She stole it from one of the women at the halfway house. And then that woman conveniently disappeared, I suppose. No, she didn't. She's right here. In Wentworth? Yeah, Jean Carter. We ran a check on your prints. I don't know what you mean. Don't you, Carter? Oh, I'm sorry, that's not right, is it? It's Nola McKenzie. Or well, have you forgotten your own name? Where's that lagging bitch? Look, what's done is done. You would have been nicked for that robbery eventually anyway. Wrong. The cops ran a check, but they couldn't pin anything on me. So your precious Kent isn't off the hook anyway. So, you're lucky. Lucky? Oh, let me tell you a few facts, little miss. Because of that lagging bitch, I've got to go back to WA. I thought you'd been inside before. Parkwoods, two murders, one a cop. What's the difference in? One jail's same as the other. Not in West Australia, it's not. Over there, they still have the death penalty for killing cops. Hell. Do you know what you've done, Lawson? You've just put a noose around my neck. I spent 20 years in a stinking little hole in Sydney with a drunken family that only sobered up long enough to draw their dole checks. When I ran off and married Eddie, I thought I was getting away from it all. Perth was so clean. For 10 years I stuck it out, but it was like bashing my head against a brick wall. He was a born loser right from the word go. Yeah, well, we've all been through that. Have you ever lived on the Nullarbor? There's nothing out there except lousy scrub and the trains going past. I used to stand on the veranda trying to keep the dust out of my eyes, watching the Indian Pacific go past. All those people going somewhere. And me, stuck in the middle of nowhere. So why didn't you up on a train and clear off? What with? He kept me broke. He blew every cent we had on booze. And so you blasted him? Yeah. 
you sitting there on the veranda cracking teenies by the dozen. Stinking hot. He told me I stink. He laughed and called me a filthy slag. So I got his rifle, and I just kept firing. Then I got into the truck and cleared off. Tried to get away. How far did you go? Not far enough. Eddie's best mate was the local copper. Oh, he was a real pig. He got on the radio to Perth and then he came after me. It took three shots to finish him. You don't do these by halves, do you? I thought I could be something. Go somewhere. Next thing I know, I'm in the slammer with a death penalty over me head. Well, I thought I was entitled to some life. So I busted out. I did a bank over, hopped on a goods train, and for the first time in my life, I was on my way. And now this. Oh, yes. I've got a lot to thank you for. You step out of Wentworth and they'll have you back on a West Australian death row in the same day. <laughs> and you think I've had it. You pig! Think, Mackenzie. There won't be any extra charges from me to keep you here. And I'll say the other women bashed you. They'll have you back in WA so fast your head will spin. <laughs> They're very funny like that. They don't like you getting killed before they have a chance to get you to the gallows. I didn't think you screws were allowed to talk to us. I do what I like with scum like you. When there's no one else around. You're learning. But you won't be here long enough to use the knowledge. By the way, there was another cop killer on death row, wasn't there? So what? They hanged him this morning. I used to be a top hand in the abattoirs back west. I could strip you to the bone with a kitchen knife and don't you forget oh, it. I told you, go easy, will you? I'm on your side. Nobody's on my side. A gallows. That's what they call the frame that carcasses are slung on. That's where I used to cut and bone them. Dead cows. And there I was, pinned up in death row, waiting my turn for the real gallows. Hello, Paddy. What the hell are you doing? You scared the living daylights out of me. I've been waiting for you. You didn't know I was coming here. Well, I knew somebody had lobbed sooner or later. Being you was just a bonus for me. What do you want? An excuse to stay in Wentworth. Well, you're a bit late. Hazel's out. Like I said, you'll do. Back off or I'll clob you. Oh, you, yeah, look at me, I'm scared. Lay off, you stinking bitch! Do yourself a favour, Lawson. Make it quick. No! Oh, I'm sorry, Paddy, but I can't let those mongrels hang me now, can I? You and me? Premeditated. Looks like you're stuck with me now. She was a pushover. Bitch! Bitch! You just a kid! I wonder if she knew she was doing me a favour. This your doing? Yeah, you're right, Smith. Oh, sure. Everything's just great. All right. Come on, Mackenzie. Smith, come with us. You wait here. The police are on their way. Come along, Smith.
Why, Mackenzie? I want to know what Lawson did that provoked such an unnecessary act. Not a thing. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. Don't insult my intelligence, Mackenzie. We both know that Lawson gave me information about you. And I am not unfamiliar with the prisoner's code on lagging. Yeah. Well, that was just a little bonus. I wasn't after Lawson. She just happened to be the first one who walked in. Mm. A bitch! That'll do, Smith. Mrs. Powell, take Smith back to the others. She will have to make a statement to the police later. Yeah, but... well, what about her? If I, I had will my... make the decision, Smith. You may go. Come on. In all my years as governor, I don't think I have ever come across anyone as cold-blooded as you are, Mackenzie. You will be taken to solitary until the police arrive. And quite frankly, the longer you are kept away from the others, the better it will be for all of us. Miss Ferguson? Come on, Mackenzie. Sure, Miss Ferguson. Too bad I'd already packed my case to go back to WA. Now I don't reckon I'll be leaving here for a long time. What do you reckon? I'm surprised you had the nerve to come back in here after what you've been having. One more lousy day and she would have been out of here if it hadn't been for you. I've got no fight with you, Smith, or like hell you haven't. Hey! What are you waiting for? There's a spare cell in solitary. <laughs> well, I suppose it had to come sooner or later. But I'm surprised at you, Trixie. I thought you and me were mates. You got no mates, Mackenzie. You're a bloody maniac. Maybe if you're in my shoes, you'd do the same. Like hell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, Maxie? Yeah, put them all right. Look, you just keep them by the top and then chase that bitch away. <laughs> What are you waiting for? You'll keep. How the hell can it be yours? You were still in the shower when I was out drying my hair. So what was that proof? I had this with me, that's what. Silly tuck. You've left your soap in the shower. Oh, so I did. <laughs> Save me a place of brekkie, will you? Must be my lucky day. I've been looking for you, Daniels. You leave me alone. Get lost, Quinn. But, but now. And now you are going to get hurt. And for that, you're going to get very badly hurt. <laughs>
Mackenzie, I am sick to death of telling you to clean these damn floors. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. I just feel a bit grog. Sudden, isn't it? Yeah. Do you need to see the sister? All right. If I could just lie down for a bit. Look, either you're sick and you're going to see the sister, or you get on with the job I've given you. All right. I'll make sure you do. I'll be back later, and you make sure they are clean. I'm sold out. I've come to say I'm sorry for yelling at you before. It wasn't very Christian and I'm really ashamed of myself. And so you should be. I don't mind telling you that I was real shocked. But being a real good Christian myself, I forgive you. Now, is there anything else? Because I'm busy. Well, if you have time, you could have a few words with the Reverend. I know he'd be really pleased. <laughs> I bet he would be. Does he want to buy some dope too? Don't you dare talk about the Reverend like that. He's a man of God. Well, he's got his God and I've got mine. Now, rack off, Wrinkles. I've got some praying to do. Miss McKenzie. Look, you can preach all you want, but leave me out of it because I think it's Ms. a load McKenzie, of crap. Please. I'm sorry if you think I've been devious. That was not my intention at all. All I'm asking is that you give me this one hearing. Then if you decide not to cooperate, I'll leave and never come near the prison again. Agreed? This ought to be good. Go for your life, preacher. Give us some of that good old fashioned preaching. Now, I'm not here to preach. All I want to do is help the women with any personal problems they may have. I don't know if you're familiar with the Bible, but Luke placed a lot of importance on the family unit. Please read this. Stick it, preacher. Like I said, no religion. Miss Mackenzie. Please read it. I'm sure you'll find it a most uplifting experience. your basket. It's my job. Oh, go on, Lizzie. It's time to get some orders in. You help me and I'll When will you learn that I decide who does what around here? Pecking order can be changed. Well, my dead body. Don't tempt me. All right, break my arm, put me in hospital, Smith. See if I care. Oh, with you in solitary, I reckon I can sew up this place for the duration. You should get yourself insured. What's going on? You're dealing again, aren't you? Now, oh, where'd you get that idea? You're dealing in dope again. Right or wrong. Yeah, we're all right, but I was going to give you your cut. <laughs> Not interested in your money. Not for the moment, anyway. Something else I want, Mackenzie. Something much more important. I'm listening. Control of the women. Real control. <laughs> How do you think you're going to get that? Through you. You see, Mackenzie, you're going to be top dog. Oh, forget it. I'm not You interested. control I'm... the women, and I control you. That puts me at the top of the heap. And you'll do it. Because if you don't, I'll blow the whistle on you and your supplier. See you in church. Smith gets back among the women. Why? 
I should. I can supply them with happy dreams. That's what they want. Only if I allow it. Listen, I know Bark is your courier. I can grab him and cut off your supply any time I like. Why the hell should you want to do that? I've done what you wanted. There'll always be someone who wants to buy a ticket out of here for a while. At any price. I just caught Lenny trying to cut her tattoos out with it. Her happy little trip has gone sour, you miserable bitch. They want the stuff, they take the risk. Get here. So, Smith's back is topped off, eh? How did that happen? I had some supplies coming in to be a different story. Yeah, well, you want an unlimited supply of drugs, and I want to get rid of Smith permanently. I think we can come to some arrangement. I'll think about it. You do that, Mackenzie. Well, Mackenzie, are you in or not? Depends. If we're going to fix Smith, I want to make bloody sure she stays fixed. I mean, what are we going to tell the screws if she ends up looking like a piece of raw meat? Oh, believe me, she won't have a mark on her. Not physically. When we're through with Smith, she's going to spend the rest of her life in hospital. You see, I've found a chink in her armour. Trust me. Trust you? <laughs> you're out of your head. Oh, not me, Mackenzie. But you're on the right track. Now, are you with me or not? Why not? I've got nothing to lose, have I? How right you are. Our plan's working out better than we'd hoped. How do you mean? I mean, if you push just a little harder, I'm sure that you might find that Smith is suicidal. That is, if you're interested. Yeah. I'm interested. Now look, Mackenzie. I don't like missing out on my sleep any more than you do. So if you come up with some answers, the sooner we can get some bloody shut-eye. It doesn't bother me, Inspector. I'm a night owl myself. We know you brought some LSD into the place. We know you You were... don't know a thing. You haven't got any evidence to pin a thing on me. Don't bet on it. Your cell's being searched right now. Fair enough. But if you find any chewing gum behind the locker, it's mine. Now look, sweetheart, I'm going to get you. And I'm going to make sure your sentence in here is doubled. You go right ahead, Inspector. The longer I stay in Wentworth, the better I like it. I'm in no hurry to go back to a death sentence. As a matter of fact, I don't give a stuff if you keep me in here for life. Oh, you won't be in here long. And if everything goes according to plan, I'll soon be in a position to do what I like around here without anyone to report on it. That's why I can't afford any link between us. And then what? Then we get around to frying the big one. We're going to get rid of B. Smith once and for all. I haven't got long. I've got to tie up some loose hands. <laughs> the great Queen B. Getting ready to meet your maker, eh, Smith? That's enough, Mackenzie. You can see how ill she is. Debbie and Patty. They're crying. They're so sad because they're alone. She's off a bloody brain. Doesn't make any sense at all. B, mm. do you want to say anything to Mackenzie? Yeah. No. Come, come here. Hey, K. Smith. But make it quick, eh? Debbie and Patty. They're both waiting. They're both waiting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Close up. What are they like? Don't piss 
to your brother now, Bob. Let him have his cover in peace. I'm going to go and tell everyone he's home. You've lost a bit of weight, but you haven't really changed. No, Mum. Your brother's still full of talk about joining up. He's not old enough. Yes, he is. How is Mick? He's dead. Mick, the boys, bestie, they're all dead. Tea will be ready soon. I've got a nice roast. You're sure? Actually, I do have to get to work. It's been lovely meeting you. Pop in and see us again if you're down in Sydney. Thank you. And you must come and see me if ever you're in Cowra. Not much chance of that. Mm. Might be your posting. Southwest of Bathurst, isn't it? I think they've got a lot of eye ties out there. Isn't that where your mate's wife lives? Well, what was she like? Well, she sounded nice on the phone. She was okay. Is she a lawyer? I don't know. I think it's important to have a lawyer. Well, why don't we talk to Dad's friend Ron? Is this dirty? It smells dirty. Do you mind? I'm not going to talk to Ron. I'd rather do get the whole thing. Okay. Did you wear that skirt today? Well, why? Just curious. You mean you think it's too short? I didn't say that. No, but you think it. I don't think that. I'm very sorry you had that experience. That's what you get from wearing short skirts, isn't it? It's quite up to you what you wear. I was just making a comment. Or isn't that allowed? Are you going to help me with dinner? Can you just let me sleep, please, Mum? Come on, get up. Please, I'm really tired. I just want to get to sleep. Well, she is still uncomfortable with me. 
but I can blame her, and I had to feel better numb. So, Rob, just tell me what happened. Did he also tell you that she doesn't know anything about it? Yes. I can understand why. It was really typical. Mm. Well, Barry said he thinks she'd be able to cope with it. Well, maybe she could accept her mother's affair, but not the fact that she stole money from Rob to pay for it. Anyway, we shouldn't be discussing it. No, no, you're right. I, I just mentioned it so that you'd have a word to her for me. Well, uh, there's the cab. Thanks again. My pleasure. Bye.
First of all, hopefully you feeling that way of seeing with other women. Well, it wasn't too bad. It's the ones I knew it wasn't serious about. And Beryl, she's different. How long have you loved him? Almost from the start. He never gave me a second look. I was just the housekeeper. You're a lot more than that. Not to your dad. We should have tried to let him know. I thought that if I just kept looking after you all, he'd eventually would realize that it's probably hopeless. Told you behind. Maybe they had an argument. Maybe. Or oh, don't tell him anything, please. Thanks. You're not mum to me and dad. I just couldn't bear not being part of the family anymore. And that won't happen. If Winifred marries Beryl, she won't want a housekeeper around. We'll just have to make sure he doesn't marry her. Are you sure you were telling me the truth? If you came here to accuse me of lying, it would be easy to make something like that sound worse than it was meant. How dare you? You have tried to cause trouble before, Doris, and I know you don't like me. No, I don't like you. Everything was fine until you came along. I wish Rod had never laid eyes on you. Then you did do it to cause trouble? Yes, 
And I'd do it again if I got the chance. Why? I told you I'm not trying to push you out of your job. Do you think I went to all this trouble for a lousy housekeeping job? You're in love with him, aren't you? That's it, isn't it? Well, what if I am? It's got nothing to do with you. He wants me to marry him. He wants me. And he proved it the other night. It's true. You ask him. I I'm sorry. I waited till Rod drove off. I have to talk to you. I'm sorry. I don't think we have anything to say. Oh, just just a minute. It's all right, darling. Mummy's here. Please. Are you going to marry Rod? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Look, I really am sorry, Doris, but I don't think it has anything more to do with you. Now, I hate to be rude, but I've got a lot to do today. It's not fair. You've got your baby and you'll have Rod. I've got no one. I know how upset you must be about losing your job and I... Doris! Open the door! Doris, what are you doing? What's going on? It's Doris, Rod's housekeeper. She's locked me up and she's in there with a baby. What is she doing? Oh, my God! Get back. Baby, I'll kill you. I said before I wouldn't have gone through with it. I wouldn't have. I know. What happened with you now? You weren't even here. You're saying me and Beryl are liars, eh? It was just a stupid impulse that lasted for a minute. There's no way in the world I would have harmed him. Well, let the police decide that. Well, it could have turned out worse, I suppose. Before, Joss has been charged with attempted murder. I mean, the magistrate could have withheld bail, though, love. He didn't have to let her go, you know. He did. They want me to see a psychiatrist. No, that's part of the bail conditions, Doris. You know, the Heavenly Father thought it best to say no when we asked about a little one of our own. That's why it's so nice to have you wanted to live with us. Oh, I was just thinking... Perhaps I'm just a silly woman. But you might like to. But only if you won't mind. Well, you can call me Mum if that's all right. But only if you want, Albert. Only if you want. If it doesn't come easy, well, let it be. But if you'd like, oh, I'd like it. Oh, oh, look at me now. All right. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Mr. Phillips and I are so pleased to have a boy. And such a good boy to look after. You are happy with us, aren't you, Albert? Yes, Mrs. Phillips. Oh, you don't have to call me Mrs. Phillips, remember? You don't mind now? 
No. Mom? Oh. Hey! Tiddly eye tie, tiddly eye tie, tiddly eye tie tie tum. Tiddly eye tie, tiddly eye tie, tiddly eye tie tie tum. Tiddly eye tie, tiddly eye tie.